spring is in the air. You know, roses are leafing out. I know the buds are not far behind. And you know what else is not far behind? Insects. That's right. And that's what we're going to talk about today. There's two basic kinds I want to deal with here. I want to deal with the kinds that have a natural predator and those that do not have a natural predator. I would advise you take a look at our longer video, Building a Host Environment for Beneficial Insects on our Garden Inspired Living channel. Take a look at that. That's going to give you a whole good way to bring beneficial insects and more importantly, keep them in your garden. But if you have things like thrips and aphids that do have beneficial insects and they get out of control, okay, here's a couple things you can do. You can squirt them off with water. That works really well with aphids, as a matter of fact. Insecticidal soaps work really well. They smother the bugs because basically they're soft-bodied. For thrips that actually burrow down into the bloom itself, you can use products that are based with a thing called spinosad. That works really well with thrips. So with aphids and thrips, squirt them off with water, insecticidal soap, use a product with spinosad, and you should be fine with that. And that'll take care of those kind of insects. Which brings me to Japanese beetles, and that's what I really want to focus on a little bit here, because I know there's a lot of different ways to deal with them. They're horrible, and there are products that will kill them, but understand those other products will also kill most other beneficial insects, butterflies, and pollinators. Your choice, I choose not to use them myself. That's the way I choose to go at it. So what do I do with Japanese beetles? There's no natural predator. So that whole building a host environment thing doesn't work. So I've got to find a couple ways to combat them. And I've got about five different tips I'm going to give you. We're going to layer the Japanese beetle protection. That's how we're going to deal with this. Number one, understand their life cycle. They spend about 10 to 11 months in the ground as a grub, mainly in your lawn. That's where you're going to find them, underneath the grass in your lawn. That's the first place to go get them. You've heard of milky spore bacteria? Works extremely well. It attacks the grubs while they're in the ground before they become adults and fly away. However, there's a new product called BTG, and I'm going to butcher the heck out of this. Bacillus thunginensis gallerii. That's the product, BTG. Just look for that, okay? Very beetle specific, specifically Japanese beetle specific. I can't believe I just said that without tripping up. But basically, that's a great product. I use it as a powder, which I sprinkle on my lawn, or pellets, basically, that I sprinkle on my lawn. I like to do it before it rains. Fall and spring, before they appear in the spring. That's the time to get them. Number one line of defense, get them while they're in the ground. That's the best thing to do. Number two, Japanese beetle traps. Yep, I just said that, Japanese beetle traps. The key is understanding how to use them, okay? Don't put them in your garden, all right? Because they're drawn to them by scent. So if you put them in your garden, guess what? They're going to your garden, okay? That's like putting, you know, something that smells like a Golden Corral buffet and being shocked when people show up, all right? It's the same basic principle. So basically, you want to put them 30 to 40 feet downwind of your garden. Downwind is the extremely important part, okay? Because they're going to smell that beetle trap, hopefully, before they smell the garden, and that's going to stop them and prevent them from getting in the garden because the trap will basically catch them, and then you can dispose of them simply that way. But some of them are going to bust through that beetle trap line of defense that you basically got up. So now what do you do? Got some choices here. Here's a little thing that I found really interesting, and this is being proved scientifically now. It's no longer anecdotal. Japanese beetles, particularly young ones, love pelagoniums. Yep, pel not species geraniums, not cranesbill geraniums. Pelagoniums, the kind you see in hanging baskets, you see them in grocery stores a lot, and stuff like that. They adore them. So what you can do is you can actually put those in the garden. I would put them on the ground, basically, because what happens is when they eat the pelagonium, it paralyzes them. Yeah, it does. It paralyzes them. And they basically lie there for hours. Birds can come pick them up. You could scoop them into a bucket of soapy water. You know, hoover them up. Yeah, get the shop back. I mean, whatever basically is going to work for you, you can do. Another little tip with that, that BT product that I talked about earlier, okay, that also comes in a liquid form. And that's another line of defense on two different levels. Number one, you basically put it, it's a powder, you could dissolve it in water. There's a couple different ways to use it. Spray it on the roses, because when the beetle ingests it, it kills them from within. That's why it's safe for other insects, all right? Spray it also on the pelagoniums. Yep, on the roses and on the pelagoniums. Hopefully they'll go to the pelagoniums first, ingest that BTG, and that's going to kill them. All right, your last line of defense, another way, the right way to go, is a bucket of soapy water. It's real simple. Basically, you just hold the bucket of water underneath the leaves and just tap them in, and the Japanese beetles fall into that bucket, all right? That's how you essentially deal with them on that situation. A couple more tips for you. I find the Japanese beetles are drawn more to certain varieties of roses, so I focus on those. That allows me to get through my garden of some 250, 300 roses in about 15, 20 minutes, really. Number two, do this in the morning or in the evening. That's when they're kind of sleepy and dormant. They'll actually drop right down into that bucket, nice and easy. And that's basically what it comes down to. With the ones that have natural enemies, try to draw beneficial insects into your garden and keep them there. If not, insecticidal soap, squirt them off with water. 
things like that. With the Japanese Beatles, I just gave you five lines of defense. I'm going to put them up here on the screen again so you can take a quick look at it. Use those more benign methods with the Japanese Beatles. I really would stay away from the harsh stuff. And if you do that, basically, you're going to have some insect damage. And you know what? That's okay. It's not a big deal. No one's going to come take your secateurs away because uh, something has nibbled your leaves, all right? That's actually just normal to have a little insect damage in your garden. It's all right to do that. So those are some very simple steps. I hope they help. And on behalf of all of our brands, this is Paul Zimmerman, and thanks for spending time in the garden with us.